Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsanza Vool, and in this video we're going to look at a quick way to make a belt buckle. So this was a fun request and it gives an excuse to use a little bit of hard ops and box cutter, so we're going to be focusing on those during the creation of this, and I'll talk through some of the tools that we're going to be using along the way. If you don't have hard ops and box cutter, you can do this without them, I just think it's vastly faster with them. I'm also going to use Mesh Machine at one point, but I appreciate that's quite an expensive add-on, I totally think it's worth it but I will talk about how we do it without that add-on as well, just for people that don't have it yet or aren't really wanting to grab it. So I'm going to shift an A, mesh, and bring in a cube, and this is going to be our starting point. Let's scale that up a little bit, and then we're going to S and then X to make that thinner, and then S and then Y to get it to the sort of width that I want my belt buckle to be. So that's probably about right, maybe a little less wide, but we can fiddle with that later. So I'm going to control an A and apply the scale, otherwise our beveling is not going to look quite right. And beveling is going to be really important for this because this is going to be a plastic belt buckle and that will typically have a rounding to most of the edges. Now let's deal with where these straps would typically come onto. So I'm going to just Alt and W to activate box cutter and I'm going to start by selecting in where I want this strap to go. So let's say somewhere about there. Now, actually, I'm trying to make this look relatively equal, but actually I'm going to intentionally do this off to demonstrate what we're going to do next. Because actually, to make this symmetrical, we're going to use a couple of tricks. So I'm going to go to about there, drag that through, and importantly, I'm going to hold Shift down as I click, which means that this object stays visible. If I didn't do that, it would just be hidden, and I'd have to come here, press Q, ever scroll, and bring it back. But it's just easier to hold down Shift as we're going. And what I want to do is I want to make this so that it is symmetrical. It's equal width on both sides. So what I'm going to do is shift click our object, Alt and X, and then I want to hold down shift and click, and then click the other direction as well, so that it's mirrored in both directions. And now we can see if I come to my object, we've got this all set up so that it will work automatically. You can do this as separate mirrors, but it's just a little bit more efficient to have it done in one go. Then at this point, we can H to hide those, and we're pretty good to go. Now I also want to have the split where we're going to have the part that comes in from one side. So click on the object and we'll just do that somewhere around there. I don't want this to be particularly big and it's going to go all the way through. Now at this point, let's put in our bevel and see how this looks. So again, hard ops, we can do this manually, but let's save ourselves some time. Click bevel and I'm going to drag that and then scroll up to get this nice rounded looking bevel. I'm going to go with about 16 segments and we can move left and right to change the amount that this is going to be beveling. I think probably about there. There looks a little bit much and it's starting to hit itself over there. So I'm going with somewhere about there looks about right. Pretty plasticky. It shows off what the material is. Now I also think this is probably looking a little bit thin. So let's Q, ever scroll, scroll down to that one and I'm just going to G and Y and bring that out and that will probably look a little bit better. Let's go to about there, let's H to hide that. Now if we ever do want to change the bevel, I can just Q and then bevel and just fiddle around with that. Maybe there is a little bit better. Okay, now at this point, this is showing in the order that we did this. If I come over to my modifier panel, you can also press Control and tilde or the little sort of back tick. Come and have a look at this and we can see it a little bit larger. And I've got my booleans, so our first boolean, which is just there, our second boolean, which is our cutout, and then our bevel at the bottom. Now what's great about hard ops is that it recognises that there are certain orders we're most likely to want to do things in. And for the most part, it's generally right. So let's get rid of the section out of here where normally the clip would be, and we'll see how this deals with it. Bearing in mind, normally, this would add this in if I added a new modifier at the bottom of this stack underneath the bevel. So D, to change our box cutter options, I want to have an end on. So let's go with somewhere about there, 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 and usefully this snaps to 15 degree increments. Double click, push through, and then I'm going to hold down that shift button to keep it there, and then click on our object, Alt and X, and then mirror that across so we've got it on both sides. And importantly, this has put this boolean above the bevel. If this was below it, this would be really sharp, but we don't want that. We want to keep the plasticky texture, and Hard Ops and Box Cutter have recognised that and kept it above. So great, we've got this in the right place and it's looking pretty good. Now maybe I want this a bit deeper, so let's ever scroll that back and then let's G and zip that down a little bit to maybe about there. 
And again, we can change that as much as we want because they're modifiers, so really easy to fiddle around with. None of this has been destructive at this point. Next, we want to have our clips, the bits that connect this part into here. So let's deal with that next. And for that, we're going to press D. I'm going to use a box again. We could probably use the end on, but I think this is just a little bit easier. And then I'm going to go to the join mode and then we're going to come back, click. And I want this to let's exaggerate the size a little bit just for what we want to do. So I'm going to go somewhere like there. Click. Scroll through and you're going to notice this makes what looks like a horrible mess, but just trust in the process. At the moment, this is all the way over to one side. I actually don't want this going all the way through. Let's put it to about there, I think is about right. And then once again, I'm going to hold down shift, click, and then I want to mirror this in the X direction. So we've now got this to the right thickness. Now, this is one instance where we don't want this being beveled everywhere because, well, that doesn't make sense to be beveled because that's not where you've got a plastic seam. That's where the clip goes in. So what I need to do is just grab this Boolean and drag it down to there. I also do need to have this mirrored in the Z direction as well. Forgot to do that. So let's bring that and put that in place. So now we've got a slight issue. I've got a bevel that I want to have on this. I don't want it along this line because this is the join between two separate bits of plastic, basically where the clips going into the main part of the buckle. So I want that to be sharp, but this edge here and this edge here, I do want to be beveled. So we're gonna to need to bevel this again. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is instead of beveling the overall object, I'm just gonna bevel the cutter. So once again, Q, bevel, scroll up. So we've got a similar amount of segments. I believe it was 16. And then we can get our width to being approximately correct. So somewhere about there, and that should look fine. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. So I can always come here to change it or I can just press Q, bevel, and it carries on changing the original one. Now, at the moment, this clip shouldn't go all the way in. We need to actually bring it down so it has a bit more of an angle to it. So let's do that. And we're actually gonna do this in edit mode. So let's isolate this, go into edge mode, and we've got our overall object that we can see here. Maybe I should have done this first so it was easier to see. In fact, just bear in mind that we probably would have done this this way, but let's go and do this one first, just so it's more clear to see. Right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to bevel this edge. So I'm gonna to go to edge mode, select that edge, and then I'm gonna control and B and just bevel that. Let's scroll up a bit to get this to, I don't know, a good number of segments. I'm actually gonna to go to 32, which is possibly a bit excessive, but I want everything nice and smooth. And this looks a little bit rubbish. So what I'm gonna do, select that edge, GG and move it on to about there, somewhere around halfway. Now what I want to do is come to face mode and we're gonna use mesh machine for this. I'll show you an alternative in a second. And all I want to do is select all of those faces. So control click down to there. So I'm gonna to go to Y, go to refuse and what's happened there? Okay, this has got slightly confused about what direction this is meant to be working in. So all I need to do is press R and it reverses it and now we're nice and smoothed out. So this is now gonna make a much better looking sort of edge to this. Now actually I think I need to go into vertex mode and let's just G and then Y that across a little bit. There we go, that's much better. Now, if you don't have Mesh Machine, let's just go back to this point. The other option that you've got is to go into vertex mode and select all of these vertices. Let's come to side view so we can see how this screws up and then we'll fix it. And then N, find your loop tools. If you don't have loop tools, edit, preferences, type in loop, and then you've got loop tools, activate it. And then what we're gonna do is click space. And that hasn't worked. Why haven't you worked? Okay, ah, it's because I've got a mirror on it. What I'm gonna do is bring off the mirror and then I can hit the space button, there we go, and it works. Now, this works quite well, except for you'll notice, if I look at the edge at the back, this is now sort of bulging up a little bit, like it goes higher than that edge that we can see that is just here. So that is a problem, let me just undo that. You can see it more clearly if I go like this, and then hit space, how it's risen up. So you can fix that, all you need to do is go from interpolation from cubic to linear, and that will bring that back down. At this point, we just need to do the same thing to the other side. So space, and it will do the same thing. 
but notice how much faster it was to use Mesh Machine. Obviously Mesh Machine is more expensive, but I think it's really worth it and it does way more than that. There's a link in the description so you can have a look at what that does. So once again, G and then Y and move that across to somewhere about there. Then we just need to bevel this. So again, we're going to bevel this original object as we did before. So Q and then bevel and then let's just bring that in up to 16 and then we've got a similar width to the other one. If we want to, we can actually come in here and specifically look at the bevel of this object. So this has got a bevel of that. So copy that and then come into this one and then paste that in there and it will literally be identical. So that's the other way to go around that as well. So there we go. We've got that pretty much sorted. We just want to make sure it actually connects together as a buckle. I'm going to be a bit lazy with this again. So Alt W for box cutter D and we're going to be using a join and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did before. No, a little bit higher than that. So there, drag that across. Let's get to the point where we can see it. So to about there. And then once again, shift, click, Alt X, mirror it across, and then make sure that that bevel is above. Oh, it seems to have dropped it all the way to the bottom. That's interesting, above those two booleans. So that'll fix that. I could come in and bevel this individual edge there as well, but I'm going to be honest, you're not going to see it. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy. Oh, and we do want to even that out. So ever scroll, click, and then Alt X, and do it in the Z direction as well. Okay, right, there we go. Let's just hide that. So there we've got our belt buckle. Now, at this point, realistically, you're probably gonna bring in the belt here, so you don't need to have the sections that will go through here. But just in case you want that, let's D, pick a circle, so what we want to do is add this to this object here. Let's come to the top view, shift and Z so we can see where that cut is from above. Let's turn on our grid. Now we can hold control and get perfectly nice and centered in the middle here. And let's go for about there. We can always change it afterwards. So click. I'm going to let go of control now that it's in the middle. I think I'll probably want it about that thick. Drag down. And then notice that this is too tall up here. So actually what I can do is press E and that will allow me to extrude or pull in the extrusion at the top. So you can see that I'm now pulling it down from the top. Click, click again, and we've got that object there. Now, I actually think this probably looks a bit off being beveled. So once again, I'm bringing my bevel up to there and I probably need to sort out where that happens so we could do that earlier. Right, I am actually going to make this a little bit thinner, I think. So let's Q, ever scroll. Let's S to scale it. Shift and Z, because I don't want it on the Z axis. We'll go to there. And I'm going to G and Y and move it out a little bit. So again, all of this is editable. Let's click there. Alt X, mirror that to the other side. And then we've got our belt buckle. So hopefully you found that useful, making a relatively simple object using box cutter and hard ops. If you did find it useful, please do give the video a like. It really helps share it around. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you want to help the channel a little bit further, we do have a Patreon page where you get these videos ahead of time, a week early. And I'll also be putting this file up so you can play around with it, with all the modifiers on it, so you can change things up as you choose and just generally have a look at what was going on. Have a great day, guys.